Guten Tag, meine Damen und Herren. Probably got that wrong, but I'll be in Germany soon, so we'll practice it. Hi. Today I was working on the audiobook version of my forthcoming book, It Came From Beyond Zen, which will be released in October in book form, in paper form, and I am hoping if I can get this audiobook done quickly enough, we'll get it out on audiobook either at the same time as the actual book, the printed book, or really soon after the printed book. The chapter I was working on today was one called Jinzu, which most people translate as something like miracles. I translated it as Buddhist superpowers. It's my imitation of Ultraman. Because I like that, it sounds funnier. It's one of my favorite of all of Dogen's pieces of writing, and it's something I think is relevant to kind of religious folks these days. A lot of the debate that I hear going between the sort of neo-atheists on this side and the religious people on that side has to do with miracles. A lot of things that atheists like to do is point out that miracles are impossible and they like to make fun of anybody who believes in miraculous powers and stuff like that. Whereas, on the other hand, a lot of religions seem to be based on the idea that miracles are real. Therefore, you should believe in the religion. Like, I remember when I was uh, early on at Kent State University running into some religious dude uh, at the student center at Kent State who told me that Jesus Christ performed great miracles, therefore he had great power, therefore I should believe in him. And that just didn't fly for me. I mean, I actually wanted to believe that, too, but I couldn't. On the other hand, when I hear people like Richard Dawkins or Sam Harris or people like that just kind of bashing anybody who believes in miracles, I, I want to be like, fuck you, Richard Dawkins, or since he's British, screw you. I want to believe in miracles when I hear that guy. And, and I think that happens on a wide scale. So, what's interesting is what Dogen does with this. A lot of folks in the West are introduced to Buddhism as a religion that has no concept of supernatural things and no concept of miracles. And then, sometimes some clever trousers people go over to Asia and they learn a little bit about Buddhism or they start reading books about certain kinds of Buddhism and then they'll go online. Oh, look, Buddhism really does believe in miracles and it does believe that Buddha is a god. It's all wrong, you know. And then they'll try to tell you that your Buddhism that you have is just some kind of Western invention, just watered down. But they really, over there, in because I was in Nepal and I saw them do this, or I was in Thailand, or I was in Japan, and I saw all this stuff happen. It's true. There are lots of different kinds of Buddhisms out there. I say this all the time, but I'll say it again. Buddhism is 500 years older than Christianity, and, and you know about Christianity. It has Christian scientists, it has uh, Mormons are a form of Christianity, it, it has the Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, it has the Moonies, you know, I believe that's a form of Christianity too. So, so there's m many, many forms of Christianity. Likewise, there's probably even more forms of Buddhism out there. But the rational, non-supernatural forms of Buddhism are as far as we can tell, the earliest ones, and they're very well established. So the idea that Buddha is not a god or a prophet is much more well established than the comparatively newer idea that he is a god or a supernatural thing. In this essay, Dogen is talking about superpowers. He's talking about miracles. And he does an interesting thing. He never denies the idea that miracles could exist. And he is talking to probably country people out in the rice paddies and fields of, of medieval Japan who probably most likely believed in miracles and believed that the reason they were supposed to have faith in Buddhism is because Buddha could perform miracles, because there's lots of, of scriptures and sutras out there in which he does. And he's telling them, no, those aren't the big miracles. Those are just small stuff miracles. He never denies that these miraculous things happened. He just says that they're small stuff, and that the real miracle is that there's a planet in a universe 
and that there's a sentient being, you, on that planet who can think about stuff like whether Jesus walked on water or whether Buddha could shoot fire out of the top of his head. That's the real miracle, and he doesn't want us to miss this. One of the things Dogen talks about in this essay is an old Buddhist story in which there's a master and he's getting up and his student comes and sees him and the master says, hey student, let me tell you about this weird dream I just had. And the student, instead of saying, hey, la, let's hear that dream, goes off and gets him a pail of water, which is what people wash their faces with in the morning to wake themselves up. And then he tries to tell another student his dream, and the other student brings him a cup of tea, which also has caffeine, and it represents waking up. Then the teacher praises the students as being the most understanding, most wonderful students ever. I love that story because I put myself in the position of those students, and if Nishijima Roshi or even Tim had ever told me, hey Brad, I want to tell you about this weird dream I had, I'd be like, hey, tell me about the dream! I want to hear my Zen master's dream, come on! Uh, I wouldn't be like those guys. So the fact that these guys can be grounded in what's really here and now rather than being impressed by the dream of the Zen master is, is really impressive. The other aspect of that story I think is interesting is a lot of people tend to read it as if the Zen master is like testing the students, like he didn't really want to tell them about his dream, but you know, he's testing them. I don't read it like that now that I've become the so-called Zen master. I tend to read it as maybe the Zen master really did want to tell his dreams to the student, you know, he's really kind of fascinated by it, and then he realized his students were beyond him. And, and, and I also further like to imagine that the Zen master later on found somebody else and got to tell his dream to somebody, you know, so that, that that's a happy ending to me. But this idea is you, you go beyond the dreams of, of miracles and, and wondrous happenings and get down to real life and understand that real life is a miracle. Another story that Dogen doesn't reference in this essay, but which is related to it, is an older story about Buddha. There's a story that Buddha was once approached by a miracle worker wizard type dude who said he could walk on water and demonstrated this by walking across a stream and walking back. And Buddha said, wow, that's neat. How long did it take you to learn that? And the yogi, this miracle-working yogi wizard dude, said, it took me 30 years of practice. And Buddha said, well, imagine that. You know, you could have just paid 50 cents to have a ferryman take you across the river. Now, it sounds like a joke when you put it that way, but this is interesting because Dogen allows for these kind of miracles to occur, and a lot of Buddhism does, but these kind of miracles are always viewed as the result of cause and effect. So if you want to learn to do a miracle like walking on water, maybe you can. I, I don't know. There's, there's all sorts of anecdotal stories out there that, that supposedly prove this can happen, and uh, who, who am I to say it can't, because you know, who, who knows? But anytime they do happen, they are things that take great practice and tremendous work to achieve. Well, when you think about it, the fact that there is a planet with an atmosphere on it that can be breathed by primates like us, and water on it that needs to be crossed, and a, a, a social system that allows for somebody to build a little boat and, and allows for money to exist in order that you can pay him 50 cents to go across the water, all of that is so incredibly unlikely, it makes the idea of somebody walking across water look silly by comparison. Just a couple of days ago, we had a solar eclipse. Here in Los Angeles, it was pretty much nothing. Uh, I think if you had the special glasses, which, like Donald Trump, I didn't manage to get in time, you, uh, you could see a little bit of a crescent shape to it, but I was trying to again, like Donald Trump, look at it with my naked eye. I mean, I wasn't stupid enough to stare at it, but, uh, but you couldn't see anything and it didn't get appreciably darker or colder. Crickets didn't start chirping and dogs didn't start barking or anything like that. It just kind of looked like a, you know, a cloud had passed in front of the sun for a few minutes and then it was gone. However, I started looking up some videos about the phenomena of a total solar eclipse and it's really incredible. There are so many bizarre coincidences you have to have in order to make 
the possibility of a solar eclipse that it seems almost impossible. For example, the moon is the exact apparent size in the sky as the sun is, which means that when the moon comes in front of the sun, it completely covers it. That's such an amazing coincidence. And when you sit there and try to imagine all the things that had to happen for that to take place, it's mind-boggling. And then you add into that the fact that there is even sentient life on this planet to witness it, and it just is way weird. The way that Dogen expresses this idea about big stuff and small stuff miracles is, as I said, not by making fun of people who believe in miracles, but by showing that those miracles are the small ones, and he does this by talking about various Buddhist stories. Now, I left out most of those Buddhist stories because I assume that my audience, you guys, probably don't know them, so they're not going to really phase us. I certainly don't know them, and they didn't mean much to me. But what I did at the end of the chapter is I tried to put those in Christian terms, since I know most of us are, are probably familiar with those things. Some of you out there are probably actual Christians. Uh, I grew up in a Christian area, but with parents who were kind of agnostic, so you know we didn't really get into that stuff. But I was steeped in it, so I understand it. So uh, here's what I wrote. I tried to doganize some of Christian mythology. Jesus fed a multitude with two fishes and five loaves, and he raised Lazarus from the dead, and was himself raised from the dead three days after his crucifixion. These are indeed great accomplishments, but they are examples of small stuff miracles, not the big time miracle. It is only because of the big-time miracle that such small-stuff miracles as the ones Jesus performed exist. Without the big-time miracle, even the most spectacular of small-stuff miracles could not occur. Jesus worked great wonders, but the greater wonder is that there is a world in which Jesus could have been born, that there is a universe in which that world exists that you and I are alive to hear about his miracles. It is only the big-time miracle of existence itself that allows smaller miracles to occur. So that was my attempt to sort of talk about biblical miracles, New Testament miracles, the way Dogen talks about Buddhist miracles in this chapter. And I hope I didn't offend too many of you, and if you liked it, there's information below the bottom, below my face, about how to donate. That's how I make my living. You can do it through Patreon or PayPal. My blog is down there and everything else. Thanks, and see you again.